Hi everyone, my name is Sam Zeff, and today I'm going to be talking about transverse plane head trunk coordination during anticipated and unanticipated sidestepping. This is some of my master's work that I did with Jill Weir, Joseph Hamill, and Richard Van Emmerich. Head rotations increase perceptual awareness. We want to obtain visual information from our surroundings, and we're able to do so with head on trunk rotation. In sport, these head rotations facilitate gaze realignment. The ball carrier realigns gaze to locate defenders and find blockers. As a result, he's able to have plays like this. However, when athletes aren't aware of their surroundings, the results can be catastrophic. Pay close attention to number 10 here. Notice the lack of head on trunk rotation and the lack of gaze realignment. And boom, he pays the price. It's important for us to understand head control during sport to create a safer sporting environment so we could have more plays like this and less like this. When changing travel direction, we reorient the head prior to reorient the rest of the body. This has been observed when walking along curved trajectories and during sidestepping tasks. For the remainder of this talk, I'm going to be focusing strictly on sidestepping. During sidestepping tasks, um, planning time has effect on the orientation of the head. Mornier and colleagues found that when planning time was reduced, the head was significantly less oriented towards the new travel direction compared to anticipated conditions. Throughout the literature, head orientation has been assessed at discrete time points, but coordination assessments may allow us to gain greater insights into the spatial development of a movement pattern. Bernstein defined coordination as a problem of mastering the redundant degrees of freedom or reducing the number of independent variables to be controlled. Consider Frankenstein moving through his environment. He reduces degrees of freedom, produces these more rigid movements. When he's reducing his degrees of freedom, he's simplifying his control strategy. In the context of sidestepping, we at all wanted to look at uh, thorax pelvis and lower extremity joint coupling during sidestepping tasks. They found that during unanticipated sidestepping, there was greater in-phase motion, which they concluded uh, that the participants reduced the number of variables to be controlled. They reduced the degrees of freedom, simplifying control. And when we think about this, we think, uh, to me, this raises the question of how the head and trunk are controlled during sidestepping tasks and the effect of reduced planning time. Therefore, the purpose of the study is to determine if differences in coordination exist between the head and trunk during sidestepping tasks commonly seen in sport. For a first aim, we wanted to assess head trunk orientation during anticipated and unanticipated sidestepping. We hypothesized there would be a reduction in the orientation towards the new travel direction during unanticipated tasks. For AIM-2, we wanted to assess head trunk coordination in the transverse plane during anticipated and unanticipated sidestepping, and we hypothesized there would be greater trunk dominancy during anticipated conditions. We recruited 12 male collegiate soccer players from the UMass men's soccer team. To be eligible to participate in the study, they had to be free of physical and neurological disorders and free from injury at the time of testing. Additionally, they had to have no history of a serious lower extremity injury or surgery within the previous year. Uh, in the lab, participants were fitted with a full body marker setup. Four markers were attached to the head uh, to define the head segment, and markers on the clavicle and sternum, C7 and T10, were used to define the trunk. Participants completed a series of run, run, stop, and sidestepping tasks for task randomization, but only sidestepping tasks were included in uh, further assessment. To uh, an example of an unanticipated task, participants ran through a set of timing gates, which triggered a stimuli at approximately left heel strike. That stimuli was an arrow at the end of a tel on a tel television screen at the end of the runway, instructing participants to change direction. This is an example of unanticipated condition. An anticipated condition, the stimuli is the same, although it's present prior to the start of the trial. We collected seven anticipated and seven unanticipated trials for our coordination assessment. A uh, coupling angle was calculated uh, and was fit into various bins. These bins described by Chang et al. in their 2008 paper allowed us to quantify coordination as in-phase, where the head and trunk move in the same direction, anti-phase, where the head and trunk are moving in opposite directions, head dominancy, where the coupling pattern is dominated by motion at the head, and trunk dominancy, where the coupling pattern is dominated by motion at the trunk. 
We assess coordination during two phases of the change of direction stride. The first being the preparatory phase from left toe off to right heel strike. And then again, during stance from right heel strike to right toe off. During anticipated and unanticipated sidestepping, we did not find significant differences in approach velocity, but we did find differences during the change of direction angle. During anticipated conditions, uh, participants change direction at approximately 40 degrees, whereas during unanticipated conditions, they change direction at approximately 34 degrees. For AIM-1, we wanted to look at head trunk orientation. This is just the uh, angle of the head and trunk at penultimate toe off. I can direct your attention to the left y-axis. Uh, greater segment angle indicates greater orientation towards the new travel direction, and reduced uh, segment angle indicates uh, greater orientation in the opposite direction of travel. Collectively, during anticipated sidestepping, the head and trunk were more oriented towards the new travel direction compared to unanticipated conditions. For M2, we were looking at transverse plane coordination using the vector coding binning method. Um, during the preparatory phase, there is greater in-phase coordination and reduced head dominancy during anticipated conditions. During stance, we did not report statistically significant differences between the two sidestepping tasks. So uh, we found that there is greater head and trunk orientation towards the new travel direction during anticipated sidestepping tasks. In agreement with previous literature, head onset occurs prior to the trunk. However, this may be a byproduct of gaze realignment as there are a number of visual orienting strategies individuals can use. Throughout this, um, this task, coordination between the head and trunk was primarily in phase. If I can direct you to this figure at the bottom, um, on the left y-axis, we have coupling angle, and this is plotted throughout the preparatory and stance phases. On the right y-axis, we have the coordination pattern, um, which just kind of outlines which coordination pattern um, each of these bins, uh, is corresponds with each of these bins. During anticipated sidestepping, there's a brief period of anti-phase coordination between the head and trunk, which click, quickly shifts towards in-phase by about 25% of the uh, change of direction of the preparatory phase. And this continues throughout stance for the majority of stance. During unanticipated sidestepping, there is this delay in uh, the shift towards the in-phase coordination pattern with greater time spent in an uh, anti-phase coordination pattern. And we think these differences in the preparatory phase may be due to initial differences in orientation. If I can direct you to our de-identified participants up top, um, the head is significantly more oriented towards the new travel direction at approximately uh, penultimate toe off, <clears throat> or at penultimate toe off. Because of this, the head is already more oriented towards the new travel direction. So a brief period of anti-phase coordination is followed by the head and trunk both moving in the new travel direction, reorienting towards the new travel direction. During unanticipated sidestepping, the head is less oriented towards the new travel direction. So there's more of an emphasis to reorient the head towards this new direction while the trunk lags behind. Therefore, there's greater anti-phase coordination before shifting towards an in-phase coordination pattern. If we look at both segments together, you can see that the head translates pretty similarly in both conditions, but it, these differences are mainly due to differences at the trunk. So uh, this study provides novel insights into the spatial development of the head and trunk during sidestepping tasks. There are differences that emerge during the preparatory phase and are dependent on planning time. Uh, however, uh, the differences that we found compared to those by Weir et al., um, we think are due to differences that are seen at the head compared to the lower extremity uh, in regards to loading. The lower extremity deals with a lot of load, but as been, has been previously shown, uh, the forces at the head are an attenuated version of those seen at the lower extremity. Uh, we're currently working on looking at the effect of planning time on perceptual awareness and whether a link exists between head control and knee injury risk during unanticipated sidestepping tasks. Uh, I wanted to thank UMass men's soccer, in particular, the head coach, Fran O'Leary, for their continued interest and involvement in our research studies. Uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach me via Twitter or email. Thank you.